Hi, and welcome to Ars Electronica Home Delivery. Today we have the Yoko Shimizu, who will talk about her work uh, regarding bioart. Mm -hmm. Um, this is one of our uh, science talks and as always we are here at the Ars Electronica uh, exhibition here in the biolab surrounded by all kinds of interesting scientific equipment and uh, it's great having you here Yoko. Thank you for the introduction and hello everyone welcome to the Ars Electronica home delivery this is the science talk episode. My name is Yoko Shimizu. I am an artist and researcher at the Ars Electronica Future Lab. Um, in the Future Lab, we collaborate with various companies, organizations, labs, and museums around the world and create um, creative technologies that combine art, technology, and society. Um, in the lab, we have researchers with all kinds of backgrounds, and I have a background in biology and chemistry. And today, I would like to show you an example of bio art that you can create with nature. Ah, one last thing I forgot. As always, your visitors at home in front of your screens are invited to take part in our discussion. Should mm -hmm. you have any questions or comments, just post them down in the YouTube chat. Okay, so without any further ado, Yoko, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. So let's start the presentation. Today's presentation's title is Bio Art with Nature, Creating High Resolution Prints on Plants with Photosynthesis. Um, on this slide, you can see a setup inside a gal gallery where I am working with plants and attaching films on the leaves of the plants to use photosynthesis to create graphic prints. This is an example of a print on a leaf. This is one of my favorite um, artists. Um, Vermeer's girl with a pearl earring is printed on a leaf with photosynthesis. Um, photosynthesis uses the mechanism of, in this series, I'm combining photosynthesis and photography. And Vermeer was called the master of light. And whenever I use um, his artworks and use um, the light in the photosynthesis, it turns out to be uh, a very beautiful print and you can see that he was indeed the master of light. This, this is, is a print, a print um, um, of, of Vermeer's milk, Milkmaid printed on a leaf. And later on, I will show you the step-by-step -step process in which you go from a blank leaf to a chemical a treatment process and then the final leaf. This is, you can also um, print photography on the leaf. This is a cup of coffee, um, which I took. And then this is a cup, cup of coffee with cookies and cupcakes, <laughs> which I took in my studio in Brooklyn, New York. So what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a chemical process where carbon dioxide and water is combined um, with the energy of the light, and then it glucose, which is a type of sugar, is created inside the leaf and then oxygen is released at the same time. The glucose, when they are connected, become uh, a chain polymer called starch. And this um, helps maintain the oxygen on Earth as well as it becomes foundation of our food chain, which means that um, animals or humans, we have to either gather food um, or hunt um, in order to get energy, but plants can actually use this chemical process to create their own food. So how do we use this photosynthesis in creation of art? In, in the photosynthesis um, series, graphic print series, which I call the photosynthographs, the first step is the film creation. Here I have created different types of graphic patterns on my computer, any design software that you want, and then printed on a transparent plastic film. And then it is attached onto the leaf. Um, the 
key point here is when you create these films, you want it to be a negative film, which means that the black and white tones will be reversed when you create the um, actual print. And if you don't have a printer that can print on um, plastic films, you can also, for example, cut out um, pieces of black paper and then attach those on the plants to create patterns on the leaves. And then, um, so this, these are actually cabbage seedlings. I actually like to use um, cabbage, baby cabbages to pr print um, the graphics because they are fairly strong and they are very stable to use and they're also easy to buy in nearby um, garden centers. After you attach the films onto the leaves, you expose them to the lights. You can, of course, use sunlight outside. Um, in the lab, I like to use um, the LED lights that are used to cultivate various types of plants because I love working with um, plants in the lab and I'm constantly growing um, different types of plants. And after the exposure to light, what is happening is during the exposure, the areas that have um, darker black tones, the lights are blocked and do not reach the plants. So therefore, um, starch is not created in those areas. Where it's transparent, the light passes through and reaches the leaf, reaches the leaf, and therefore you can, you can see that um, starch is created inside, the, inside those areas. After the exposure, you cut off the leaf to stop the photosynthesis process. And then you boil this in the water a little bit to soften the leaf. And then the next process is the chlorophyll extraction. So the green pigments inside the plants are called chlorophyll, and they are, the sort, they are in charge of the photosynthesis process. But in this process, after the photosynthesis, we extract them so that you get um, a pure white leaf, which will become like a white canvas or a white sheet of paper for your print to appear. The next step is the chemical treatment process. Here we use iodine, which reacts with the starch inside the leaves. And the iodine you can see here is sort of um, a brownish purplish color on its own. And when it reacts to the starch inside the plants, it turns into also uh, a dark brown, um, violet blueish color, which acts as a stain for your graphic print. Here you can see a time lapse of the chemical reaction process. You start with a white leaf, but inside you already have the starch building up, built up during the light exposure. And you can see that the word biodesign gradually appears on the leaf. And when you're finished with the chemical treatment, you can take this out of the water solution and press them in between either pieces of wood or something very hard and heavy like um, books, for example. And then when it's dried, um, you can exhibit them in the galleries. In my project, I often have a lot of gallery exhibitions around the world, including workshops. This is an example of a gallery exhibition. You can see that in the middle, we have the um, lighting fixtures for the um, lighting process. And then you can see that the films are attached on the baby cabbages. And then on the side, I have the LED display panels where I exhibit um, the finished leaves. The entire chemical treatment process can be seen during my exhibitions. 
And then, and then these are the leaf, finished leaves that are on the LED displays on the lights. And this is an example of the Ars Electronica Festival, um, where different artists and labs from around the world present their latest works. And in the festival, I also um, gave uh, workshops and talks and then performances on how you can create your graphic print on the plants using photosynthesis. And this was the setup that we used for the festival. And then we printed the Ars Electronica logos on the leaves. Um, this is an example of a workshop that we did in New York, Brooklyn, New York. There is a community bio lab called Gen Space, and they give lectures and um, lessons to the local kids, including high school students. And we created different types of prints and experimented with the process with the local students. So as you can see, just with the photosynthesis process, you can make all kinds of designs and artworks on the plants. And there are many, many things that you can do using um, the biological process and the natural phenomenon that is occurring all around you. And the wonderful thing about combining um, biology and art is that you get to learn a lot about um, the natural processes, for example, photosynthesis and how does that work. And at the same time, um, photography, for example, this is very similar to analog photography, um, using films and lighting exposure and the development process. So you also get to and then also learning about what kind of designs or artworks works best for photosynthesis and experimenting with artworks that uses light in the most beautiful way. And um, this Vermeer's um, girl with a pearl earring actually always works out the best and in any performance or exhibition that I've done so far. And I actually use this film as a test film for all of my exhibitions or workshops. And you also get to learn about different artists and how they experimented and studied light in the same way as scientists as well. And also through the chemical reactions, um, it is always fascinating to see how graphic images emerge. And also when you work with nature, um, you start with something that you designed, but in the end also interact with nature and your artwork interact with the shape of the leaves or the veins of the leaves. And the result is more fascinating and more beautiful than something that you could have ever imagined. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, that's amazing. I wouldn't have thought it possible to achieve such a high resolution on a leaf. So, mm -hmm. did this come as a surprise to you, or did you did you exactly know what to expect from the experiments? Um, well, because photosynthesis is occurring um, on a very small level inside the cells of the plants, so I did theoretically think that we might be able to achieve very high resolution prints, but when I actually saw the result, it was more beautiful and more, a lot clearer than I imagined, and I was very fascinated by yeah, that. I can imagine that. <laughs> Another question that came up is, um, do we have any other recommendations for creating bio art without any special equipment or on a super low budget, like something you could do at home with your own uh, garden grown baby cabbages? Okay, so um, there is another project that I really like and maybe I can show you in um, other episodes, yeah. um, but so there's a series that I, that is called Gravitropism, um, where you can tilt the angle of the plants that you're growing. And inside the plants, um, there are plant, the chemicals that react very accurately to the angle 
of, um, against the gravity because they always want to make sure that they're facing up and find the light and then um, find their way up. So when you tilt, for example, a plant 90 degrees, you can see that it will gradually like turn and bend itself and create like this really interesting angle on the plant. Yeah. And then you can tilt it again in many times or in different angles and gradually create this plant structure that is that you cannot find in nature. Yeah. And all you need is like sunlight and gravity, which you can always find, and then your favorite plant. And, and this differs from plant to plant, so it might be fun to experiment with different types of plants. Cool, but it sounds like something you could do at home with your yes. own plants. Yes. Cool, let, let, let's try it out, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, another question. Um, is there something you'd like to try but can't because science hasn't progressed far enough yet? So there are lots and lots of experiments that I would like to try outer space because gravity is different, yeah. like the, um, the chemical components of in the air is different and everything is so different out there. And we, we have very little information and we don't have much exper experience in experimenting with living things outside of Earth. So I am very, very interested in the space exploration right now and I am actually also working with space organizations so that w when we go to other colonies, because now we're at a stage where we're trying to go to Mars or to be on the moon and then also have um, space, not just space stations, but like space hotels or living spaces um, outside of Earth or on low, orbit, low orbits. So it would be great to be able to do lots of different biological experiments outside of Earth. So the future lab needs its own space station. Yes, let's build a bio lab in the space station. All right. <laughs> let's, let's see if there are any, any more questions. questions. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's one question coming up. Just give us a minute. Yes. Ah, have you ever worked with tardigrades, with the mm. little uh, with the little water bears? And if not, would you consider to? No, I have not. But yes, I'm always interested in different or organisms, um, not just plants. And we do have a lot of um, researchers within this lab, including the info trainers yeah. that are um, growing different types of organisms. So yes. Yeah, it seems as if those little buggers are really, <laughs> really popular around here. Yes. So, so I, I think, think that's, that's it, it Yoko. So. So. Oh, there's one more question coming up. Or not? Is it? So, Melinda, give me a sign. Ah, okay, one more question coming okay. up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's life. Sometimes yes. you have to wait. I mean, I, I love the interaction that we have in home delivery because yeah. you get to not only um, talk about what you're working on, but also interact with different types of people who have different points of view. And that always, I feel like, is a learning experience for me and a an source of inspiration for yeah. me as well. And, and also for us, of course, uh, having the chance to talk with all you amazing artists and scientists. Okay. Have you worked with other kinds of artists from other fields to create some kind of synergistic mm -hmm. uh, bio art projects? Yes, so um, as I mentioned, I do, I am currently working with space related artists, yeah. um, artists who have actually sent their artworks to space, for example, so that we can together um, open new doors of research and artistic expressions and be the pioneers of creating um, biological artworks in space. Cool, cool. so, so future, future level. We really <laughs> need on space station. Yes. Okay, um, I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, 
thank you as always. Thank you, Yoko. It was amazing you. having you here. And uh, tune in next time. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.